and so that's really interesting that you had you almost see it in in reverse a lot in in kind of current additive manufacturing space like in this case like you prove that you could go throw a an engine component on a plane and at 30 50,000 feet like it, and it, nothing blew up and so like you the worst case scenario is kind of taken off the plate for 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 yeah. all intents and purposes and then you can kind of go back and do some of the more rigorous mechanical tests right. whatever you're right. doing a lot of times that I've seen other companies and I'd love to get your perspective on this is like they spend so much time digging into the microstructure, the mechanical properties that they almost lose track of like, Hey, is it going to be good enough? Like you can nitpick on a right. million different things and parameters can change and different machines, but it, it's often the case that there's a very long lag in terms of qualifying a material. If you come at it just on uh, yeah. proving that the mechanical properties are sound or good enough and no one can ever tell you what that is. That's true. Um, the two greatest impediments to accepting additive manufacturing are the lack of material property data and culture. Right. So I, I can remember printing parts and the turbines group wanted to do all this testing on, and I asked the simple question, well, how does casting stack up to this testing? And the answer was, well, we never did that, right? Because that, that technology didn't exist 20 years ago, right? Well, then why are you doing it now? Because it just seems that what you're doing is adding on more and more requirements that you would not add on casting. Now, granted, we've been using castings for 50 years, but you are you don't know what the results of those tests would be if you did a casting. So therefore, you don't know what's good or bad, right? In my mind, if you're replacing a casting, you have to be better, the FAA has specifically say, you have to be good as or better than what you're replacing. So we're because of the microstructure, you're much better at tinsel, right? Much better than a casting. You have the same oxidation resistance. You have, you have improved creep, you have improved HCF, but it's like testing after testing. You know, there are two books on this, this very topic. In fact, if you go back into the 1980s, now Ford used to have this sign hanging in their cafeteria that says culture each strategy for breakfast, right? And what they're trying to say is, you can have the best technology in the world, but the culture of the design community may or may not let you use that technology. So Condoleezza Rice wrote a book, she co-authored a book called Political Risk, and the other book I thought was fascinating on this very topic was the, the Space Barons, where it talks about the creation and emergence of, of um, SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, yada, yada, yada. And Condoleezza Rice's book focused a lot on corporations who don't, who don't, or who are afraid of new technologies because if it doesn't go well, it could hinder their employment with the company. You know, and it's just in my role, um, even at Honeywell, I was, in the end, I was uh, working to develop the supply chain for additive. You go into these space companies in California for example, and you're going to see nobody over 35 years old, and you're going to see additive machine after additive machine, and, after, and you don't count them one, two, three, four, you count them 10, 20, 30, 40, right? But if you go into some of the aerospace engineers, aerospace companies where the engineering age is much older, it's like, oh, there's another barrier you got to go over, right? People are afraid to make a decision, even if it's a better product, 
culture always wins, right? And it's in, in proving it to them metallurgically, it's not always good enough. Yeah. It's just one more excuse that they could use to delay it or not make the decision, right? We need more right. testing. We need more. And it's uncertain. I, I, right? talk to, I talk to young people at various companies and they're like, because they have a little bit of additive, and th this is really true for all the OEMs, you become hot property in the job market, right? If, if you know additive, you're going to get a job. And um, the question they have to ask is, do you want to be employed in an area where you have the latest and greatest propulsion technology, or do you want to be employed making spare parts for 30-year-old engines? Because that's really where we are. I mean, right now, the, the hypersonics market, the space market, it's hard to keep up with it. It's so, they're growing so fast. 